Yeah, so um, back in 2004, I had a, a, well, pretty much a trifecta of, uh, of setbacks. I um, first broke my neck, um, which was the best thing that happened to me that year, and I'll explain that uh, in a minute. But um, I was in a, on a practice court in Rome and um, pretty much slid head first into a net post and um, fractured a C7 in my spine. and. Uh, Got to the hospital and eventually got home. And um, when I got home to Connecticut, it was the last six weeks of my father's life. He had been suffering from stomach cancer and uh, ended up passing away. And so that's why I say break my neck was the best thing that happened to me because I got to be home with my dad and spend that time with him and say all the things that needed to be said uh, to him. And he wouldn't have let me come home otherwise, I don't think, because I would have still been on the road and 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 playing and competing. and. Um, so that was the best thing that happened to me and after that um, stress has uh, an amazing way of um, bearing itself physically uh, on me and it, it created a zoster which is like shingles and attacked my facial nerve so I was the left side of my face was paralyzed and lost my balance and hear, part of my hearing and uh, part of my eyesight so I was pretty much struggling and didn't know if I would ever play tennis again and the doctors weren't sure if I would ever play so um, that's where setting goals day by day was so important to me because if I thought about the, uh, any sort of playing in the U.S. Open or getting back and being top 10 in the world, top 20 in the world, anything like that, it would have seemed so far away. And I, I think I would have gotten a little depressed. I would have been upset about the fact that I was so far away from that. So all I did was every day think about what I can do a little better. I would try to um, move my eye a little bit more, try to be able to, to smile a little bit more and, and go out on the court. The first times I went out on the court, it was really just being able to see the ball when I tossed it up to serve. It was just spending five minutes on the court with my coach and just seeing if I could actually make contact with the ball. And you know, then the next day it could be 10 minutes. And then, okay, now I need to take a couple days off because this is disheartening. Now I need to get back to it and try it. And every day was getting a little bit better. And I still remember a friend of mine joking that well, you know what, next year it's all right, you're going to win the U.S. Open. And I thought, you're absolutely crazy. That's not even in, in my mindset. And before I knew it, um, the next year I was in the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open against Andre Agassi, and I thought, man, I wonder if he was right. Maybe I will actually win the U.S. Open this year. And I didn't, unfortunately, but the setback was, was such that I needed to focus on such small goals every single day that if I had thought that the next year would have been one of the best years of my life and 2006, just two years later, would have been um, in my career the, the best year in my career by a long shot and finish at number four in the world. If I had thought of that two years prior when I was laid up and my face wasn't working, I, I, I don't think I ever would have gotten there. I needed to just take small steps every single day to reach that goal. And before I knew it, when I was reaching that goal, I, I wasn't even thinking back to all the hard work I was doing. I was like, this is this is just the progression. This is where I belong. This is where I should be. And um, I think that played a huge part in it was just the process I was taking to get there.